Hi, my name is FC and in today's video we're going to be looking at how you get a CVE. Firstly, you've got to find something. You have to find a vulnerability, a bug, something to report. I can't help you with that. You know, you're going to have to find those on your own. But the thing is, you have to remember, it has to be a unique finding, right? It can't be something that someone else has already found, right? You're not going to get a CVE for that. This video is not about how to find bugs, right? There are plenty out there. Uh, this is the process of how to get a CVE assigned to you. So how do we do that? Well, once you've found your bug, right, you, you've figured it all out, you report it to the vendor or whoever made that software, right? Now there's going to be a process there which may or may not be nice, right? Some vendors are really, really good. Some vendors are not so good, right? Maybe they've got a bug bounty system. Maybe they don't. Maybe they've got a triage system. Maybe they don't. You have to find who wrote that software and then contact them and then say, look, I have found a bug that I believe is a vulnerability within your software. I'm going to submit a CVE for this, but I wanted to let you know so that you can fix it. So the vendor will then go away and hopefully fix the issue, right? They'll then let you know that they fixed the issue and maybe you can test it with them. It depends really on how nice they are and how nice they are to work with. Then what you do is you go to MITRE and you submit for a CVE. Now this is just a simple form, you go onto the website, it's a, a nice little form, very simple to work out, very easy. You go through it, you fill out the form with all the details of what that vulnerability is. Now it's good if you can include references, screenshots, that sort of thing, any sort of proof of concept that you can show that that vulnerability actually exists. What will then happen is that team will then triage it, make sure it's a, a unique vulnerability, and then they'll email you, right? So you'll get an email that says, literally it's very terse, it just says use CVE blah blah blah. That's it. So now you have a CVE assigned. So if you go and Google that, you're not going to find it, right? It's not been released, you've just been assigned that number against that vulnerability, but nobody knows about it, it's not public yet. So how do you make it public? Well, the obvious thing is you write a blog post about it, right? Or maybe you do a coordinated blog post with the vendor, right? We've done that before uh, at Sygenta. So it's really nice when that happens because you both put out something uh, to the internet, right? So once a blog or some other system like that is been written about with that CVE number and it must be included in that blog post, for example, like in the title or something, talking about that specific CVE that they told you to use. Once that's been released, you then send a link um, to all of those publicly available documents about it, right? whether it's with the vendor or not, anything that you've released, you give all of those URLs back to MITRE, right? So you just reply to the email and then they go and look at them and make sure that it's public knowledge and everyone's happy. And then it gets released, right? That is then publicly available for everyone. So now if you go back and search for those CVEs on Google, you will find them, they're all there. So I hope I've made the process of getting a CVE a little bit more easy to understand. Um, it's not a complicated process. The hardest part by far is actually finding the bugs in the first place. Um, you know, it really helps if you're doing a lot of testing a lot of times. Um, you know, we'll find maybe one of these every month um, that's CVE worthy. Um, we don't always register a CVE just for other reasons. There, there are some reasons we can't always go public with vulnerabilities that we've discovered. Um, so just be aware of that with your client if you're testing. But honestly, it's a numbers game. Just do more tests and you'll find these, these bugs that no one else has done and then you can register for a CVE. So I hope you've enjoyed that video um, and I hope that I have made the CVE process a little bit more easy for you to understand.